The focus of this lesson is on growth and decay problems, particularly half-life. So when we talk about growth or decay, we're using the formula a of t equals a naught times e to the kt power. So a naught is your initial amount of substance that you're starting out with, and over a period of time t, you get a future amount, which is a of t. So that's your future amount. So it could be either higher or lower, depending on whether it's growth or decay. And then k is the constant rate of growth or decay. And if k is positive, then you know that it's growth. If k is negative, then you know that it's decay. And using that growth and decay formula, you can always determine your constant rate of growth, k. And once you have that, then you can use the half-life formula to determine your half-life. And half-life is the time it takes for a substance to decay to half of its initial value. So in that case, k will always be a negative value that you're using. And the formula that you would use is that the half-life is equal to negative natural log of 2 over that constant rate of growth k. So just again, k may not be given. You may have to use your growth and decay formula to solve for k. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So we have 60 grams of magnesium 28 decayed to 7.5 grams after 63 hours. What is the half-life of magnesium 28 to the nearest hour? So what I would do first is I would go ahead and identify all the pieces of information that I was given. So the initial amount of our substance, which is magnesium 28, is 60 grams. So my, I'll, I'll go ahead and write up here, my, my A naught is 60 grams. And then it decayed to 7.5 grams after 63 hours. So my future amount after time 63 hours is 7.5 grams. So we can see that that decayed. So we would expect our k to be negative in this problem. So my time is 63 hours. And um, we, we'll have to determine the k because we do not know it. But again, we would expect it to be negative. And then the goal is to get the half-life. So that'll be a second step problem. So the goal is to use the fact that half-life is negative natural log of 2 over whatever k that I get. So. To determine our k, we're going to go ahead and use our growth and decay formula, which says a of t equals a naught times e to the kt power, so k times t. And then our future amount is 7.5 grams. Our initial amount is 60. Our k is unknown, but our t is 63, so we could write 63k. And then we want to solve for k, which is up in a power, so we're going to have to use log at some point. So go ahead and divide off the coefficient of 60 from both sides. So you get 7.5 divided by 60 is e to the 63k. And then to pull that 63k out of the power, that's when I'm going to have to apply natural log to both sides of my equation. And so when I do that, I'll have the natural log of 7.5 divided by 60 would be equivalent to the right-hand side, which is the natural log of e to the 63k. But then that means the natural log of 7.5 divided by 60 equals 63k. So then last step, divide off 63 from both sides, and that's your k. So natural log of 7.5 divided by 60, all of that divided by 63 is my k. Well, now that I have that, I can switch gears to my 
half-life formula, which says I can take my half-life is equivalent to negative natural log of 2 divided by my k, but the k that I have is the natural log of 7.5 divided by 60 divided by 63, and then I probably would simplify that a little bit, and a fraction divided by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so this would give us negative 63 natural log of 2 over the natural log of 7.5 divided by 60, which simplifies down to approximately 21 hours. So the 60 grams of magnesium decayed to 7.5 grams in 63 hours, so we, that's far, far more than half, right? It decayed more than half in 63 hours, so we would expect it to be less time. So in 21 hours is how long it takes to get to basically 30 grams, so to decay to 30 grams. And so that is our half-life problem.